Hi guys, T here, here to respond to some of your questions that you guys have been asking on D&D &D Stories Retold. So uh, I gathered a whole bunch of different comments and stuff, and we're going to go through some of them today for a question and answer vlog kind of thing. So here we go. Uh, from several people, would you DM or participate in a game with me? No, sorry, I can't. Uh, it's the holiday season, I'm in a campaign right now, I'm doing D&D &D Stories Retold, and you know, life is super, super, super busy, so I can't just jump into any random games, I have to plan for them, so sorry, I can't just accept anybody that runs up. Um, that's just the nature of the beast, according to my schedules. Uh, from Mr. Random, what are the Wan T? Uh, they're snake people. Um... Some of them have two arms and two legs. Some of them are like a snake from the waist down. Um, they all have the slitted pupils. They all have the forked tongues and fangs and stuff. They come in a lot of different breeds. There's Wanty, Wanty Half-Bloods, Wanty Abominations, and so on and so forth. Look in, um, just look in the Monster Mandel Manual. Uh, I'll show you how to spell it here. Uh, <laughs> That was, that was half the damn comments all through uh, the Ouroboros contract is, how do you spell Wan T so we can look it up? This is how you spell Wan T. <laughs> so, so Google that and you'll, you'll find them. They're the snake people. Um, from Chris McFarland, why did you stop your Skyrim vids? Uh, well, Let's Plays on my channel are kind of in-betweener kind of things, like if I'm not working on a project or if I'm in between D&D &D campaigns or, you know, there's nothing in particular for me to work on and the channel is, like, going silent, then I pull out, like, a Let's Play. I did Legend of Grimrock and Legend of Grimrock 2. We played around on Morrowind for a while. Um... Skyrim was uh, was an editing project for me just to kind of practice my my movie making skills and quite a few people have actually been asking me to continue my Skyrim stuff so all right uh, in the next couple of days if I get some free time I'll sit and just play for a few hours and and start pumping out episodes again I didn't realize it was going to be that popular. Um, because so many people do Skyrim Let's Plays. I, I was just kind of throwing it up so you guys would have something cool to watch. But if it's that popular, sure, I'll go for it. Definitely. Um, from Tyler Rosin, what happened to the Skyrim videos? They just stopped when they were getting really good. Well, okay, there you go. I'll do more, I promise. From Jurassic Dragon. That's a cool name. Um... Uh, I want to make my fighter immortal without becoming a lich or anything inherently evil. Any advice? Uh, my only advice would be to learn the difference between immortal and invincible. Because just because you can't die doesn't mean that you can't be defeated or knocked out or chopped into pieces and scattered to the four winds or thrown into the sun. It just means that you'll never depart your body, regardless of what happens to it. And it doesn't mean you can't feel pain, and it doesn't mean you can't get beaten down or irreparably burned or something like that. I think what you're probably going for is invincible, which is a completely different state of being. If you're immortal, um, yeah, like I said, it just means you can't die. It doesn't mean you're going to be stronger. It doesn't mean you're going to be better. It just means that you don't drop, and that's actually more of a curse than a, than anything else, in my opinion. Uh, from Cult Mustang, do you know of any races with red or purple eyes that are humanoid or can turn into humans that can mate with humans but aren't too powerful? I guess you're, you're wanting to make like a half-breed character, so... Red or purple eyes, that's, that's kind of vague. Uh, minotaurs... Wan T, Lizard Folk, Kobold, Doppelgangers, any of the shape shifting races. Um, just just like look through your monster manuals. Uh, a bunch of them have like little boxes at the bottom say, you know, if you want to play a character with this race, you know, here's the common traits and things, and then just cut them in half and you know, study with your DM to see if you're if you're a half breed of, you know, a human and this, or an elf and this. Uh, 
as far as what traits would pass to the child. Eye color is not really something you should base it out of because eye color among humanoid races is can vary wildly uh, depending on what they are and where they're from. So, uh, from Hanhoa Ong. You did stand-up comedy? Why did you stop? Will you post videos of it? Yes, I did stand-up comedy in high school um, through talent shows and things. And yes, I straight-up parroted uh, some of my favorite comedians for a while because I didn't have any of my own content. People liked that. I came up with my own jokes and stuff, and people loved that because I was poking fun at the teachers, poking fun at my fellow classmates and the school and everything in between in front of crowds of about 500 people, and it worked out really well. Um, why did I stop? Well, I had to go to college, and then uh, there weren't really like talent shows or anything at college. And I started looking at the life of a stand-up comedian. It's a lot of traveling, a lot of living out of a suitcase, being shipped from place to place if you're successful and you know there's you can count the successful comedians you know on the east coast on your hands and feet people that are like household names that are actually successful it's a very hard way of life uh behind the curtain will you will i post videos of it well they they don't exist you know because this was high school and um, they didn't record anything, much less to pass out to the people that participated. So, sorry, such a, such a recording does not exist. Uh, from Anonymous, with a long string of numbers. Uh, you've mentioned your studio lights a few times. What are you using? I'm using uh, 160 LED lights. Um, well, actually, they're here behind me. Let me grab it. Oof. It's a... Uh, Newer CN160, you can see, you can see right there. Um, they use either battery packs or six double A's, and if you use the double A's, they only last for like three hours. And uh, it comes with these filters that uh, you can slide on and off because looking directly into 160 LED bulbs is not good for your eyes. So I put these filters on to uh, protect my eyes and to keep the lights soft. Um, and being the good, uh, not economical, but environmentally minded person, I use rechargeable batteries because if I had to go buy new batteries every time these lights sucked the life out of these double A's, well, I'd be broke. So I've got this one hour charger because it takes 12 double A's to, uh, to light up my lighting setup. And I would have gotten more stuff, but more stuff is more money, so, eh. <laughs> I would have gotten, like, the, the actual batteries that go with these, but that was, like, a whole nother system that cost a whole bunch of money. I was like, if I can do it with double A's, you know, a D&D &D story lasts about an hour on average, and these batteries last for three hours, so every two or three episodes, I just recharge them and put them back in, and it's fine. Uh, my fiance Bree, is teaching me how to how to light something properly with mixed results, but uh, that's the kind of lights that I use. Um, um, is your rec oh, from Werewolf zero one seven? Is your recording room hot? You seem to be getting sweaty. It's not so much that it's hot. It's it's actually several factors. One, uh, when we started D and D stories, we're told the lights were way too damn bright. And um, several factors kind of played into that. The, the 160 LEDs can be really obnoxiously bright. Um, my camera is just a $200 cheapo. Um, before I tell D&D &D stories, I go and I shower and I shave and I scrub my face. So part of that is my skin is clean and shiny. And um, because of the lighting situation in here, I have a director's blanket on the window and I have to close the door and stuff to control the sound quality a little bit better. And I've got the foam. So um, it does get pretty warm in here, but not as warm as you might think. That shine is not all sweat, I promise. That's me being clean and that's my lights being strong. So <laughs> I'll try to get that under control. Uh, what else? Yeah, from Colin Lane. Why do you look so shiny in D&D Stories Retold? That's why. Uh, from Michael Peterson. 
Uh, as far as the Ouroboros campaign story goes, doesn't magic come from the gods? Shouldn't it be no gods, no magic? Well, that depends on what source you're drawing from. Uh, holy magic obviously comes from gods, uh, with the exception of, like, of certain paladins, which are like, I'm a paladin of truth or a paladin of justice, and they don't actually follow gods. Uh, paladins of ideals like that can make their own holy magic. Arcane magic uh, comes from, like, math and the universe around you and stuff. Uh, draconic magic is what mag the language that magic is written in, so that has magic all of its own. Uh, spiritual magic comes from inside you, like monks and things. Um, alchemical magic, like turning lead to gold and things, that's borderline science, so not necessarily in the power of the gods. So... Or even like a sorcerer. You know, a sorcerer has magic because one of his ancestors was magically potent, whether that be a dragon, an elemental, a god, whatever. Because of their ancestry, that magical bloodline comes into them, so their magic is of themselves. Um, the gods being absent takes away holy magic and not much else, to be honest. It's, it's kind of like whatever your flavor is or how your cosmology is set up. But there's more than one way to, to cast magic. Um, from Rudy Tooty Point and Shooty. I love that name. Uh, how can I make a successful YouTube channel? Oh, that's a whole different conversation. Um, don't do anything I do, because my channel is like seven years old, and I don't even have like 10,000 subs yet. Um, whenever you... Whenever you start, don't start it trying to make money. This is not, especially now, is not a great way to make a living. Do it because you love it. Do it because you want a hobby and you want to connect with other people that like your hobby. Reply to all the comments. Always talk with the people that comment on your videos. You know, type several sentences if you can. Stay tight knit with the people that like your work and voice it. Um, the way YouTube is right now, comments and clicking the like button don't really mean anything anymore. It's all about the retained watch time because they've rearranged all the algorithms and bullshit like that. But um, do it because you love it, not because you want to make money, not because you want to make uh, yourself more popular. Um, you will not be noticed for a long time and don't be discouraged. Uh, some people explode right away. Some people, it's five years, and they explode. You know, YouTube's been around for a long time, so everything is well-established, and everybody is vying for everybody else's attention. So try not to be discouraged. And uh, I guess that's about it. So, uh, next one. Uh, from Anime Shrine Kid 777 do you know... Did you know that F Fantasy Flight released their own Star Wars RPG? I did not know that. Of course, I'm not really into Star Wars. I go and see the movies when they come out, and that's kind of it. I just was never really super into it like a bunch of people are. From Kyle Harrison, do you have an upload schedule? Uh, for, for the most part, sort of. I try to have at least one video a week. Um, while I'm in the holiday season right now, as far as D&D &D stories goes, I try to either have one video every three days or one video whenever the last episode hits a thousand views, just because I know the vast majority, like my core audience, has seen the last episode, so it's like safe to put the next one up without overwhelming people, because they're, they're 40, 50, 60 minute videos. I, I have no delusions that you're going to sit and just, like, binge watch me sit there and talk to you. You know, it's it's not going to happen. So I try to space them accordingly with other people's schedules in mind. So uh, three days or a thousand views is, is usually my formula. Or if I'm super, super busy doing other stuff, I try to make sure I have at least one video a week. Uh, from The Mystic Mage, do you have a favorite character that you've played as? I assume you mean in, in tabletop games. Um, I, I really liked playing as Yeenot way back in the day, and we have not yet come to Yeenot's story in D&D &D stories or in um, D 
D&D stories retold. So that was another lost campaign that uh, we will be getting to eventually. Yeenot was a sorcerer who specialized in enchanting things and animating things like chariots to go by themselves. And uh, we'll, we'll get to him someday. But, uh, yeah, Yeenot is just Tony backwards, so it was really clown shoes, but we had a lot of fun with that character. So we'll get to him someday, but uh, he was my favorite. From Leah Mecca. For Shadow of the Northern Plains, did you go back and ask around about the details so the story would be more complete when you did it for D&D Stories Retold? Well, the main point of D&D Stories Retold was to uh, protect myself legally because, again, YouTube's landscape is changing rapidly in terms of people suing one another and in terms of images or, or music or artwork that belongs to other people being used for whatever reasons. Fair use is completely under fire right now. Uh, Nintendo is on a war path with absolutely everyone when it comes to doing reviews. Like, I just did a review of uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, and within 12 hours, Nintendo hit me with a copyright claim. They didn't want me making money from that review. And fuck Nintendo, I'll never do another review of any of their stuff ever again until they get their heads out of their asses. But um, when I started doing D&D Stories Were Told to save myself, like, legally, um, I realized, you know, five or six years has gone by since the original... Um, which one was it? For, for the original Shadow of the Northern Plains... And I went back and I watched the original uh, I'm Parlicia video and I realized what an asshole I was being. Just an absolute asshole to this brand new DM who had, who had no business running around with six level 10 players but tried his damnedest and he got chewed up and spit out by these, by these veterans, myself included. And um, I realized that half of that video was just me being down on the guy, ripping him apart, tearing him down, when I should have been uh, sticking to the story, you know, laying down suggestions, not being such a bully, you know? So not only was my attitude off the first time around, but, uh, you know, five years later, I'm not uh, stuttering and drinking and pausing for huge amounts of time and stuff like that, so I was able to properly articulate what happened instead of just sitting there and bitching for an hour. I was able to tell the story as it happened and um, make it sound better and more, more epic without just ripping this DM apart for half the damn video. So I didn't really go around asking about the details. I just did a better job this time. I mean, five years of storytelling experience will help you with that, especially when it comes to sitting in front of a camera. So didn't run around asking for details, but I did, I did better this time, I believe, which is the point of D&D Stories Were Told. Saving myself legally and covering up how much I sucked when I started. <laughs> um, and yes, that is the plan. Uh, when D&D Stories Retold is done, I'm going to get rid of the original videos just because no artist goes through life without hating their early work, but I, I really shouldn't have two of the same story on my channel. It just looks dumb. So when I finish out, like, Season 1, I'm probably going to get rid of the original Season 1 so that I don't have to look at it. Um, from Matthew Whitehead... Did the guy that ran Shadow of the Northern Plains ever run another campaign? Yes, he did. Uh, I was not there for it. We had since graduated from college, and, and I have not been back to Bowling Green, Kentucky, um, where uh, Western Kentucky University is. These, these were my college friends. Um, but by the time he, he stepped behind the curtain to be DM again, I was graduated and gone. So he did, I just wasn't there. Uh, so hopefully he improved over time. I, I don't know. Uh, from Dark Link Does MC, I really enjoy the Bard speech openings. Do you think you could do it more often? Oh, uh, you mean the uh, the cold openings for uh, for like the series and for the start of each campaign with with like the minis and stuff. Um, 
the the cold openings since I'm not a good actor and not a good uh, cinematographer in terms of trying to do the storyline like I did in the original D and D stories. This is the equivalent of that this time around. And I don't want to do one for every episode because I only have so many minis and, like, toys and things to play with. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll probably do, like, bardic musings like that, like, at the beginning of every campaign. Like, you'll notice there's one at the beginning of D&D &D Stories Retold, there's one at the beginning of uh, Shadow of the Northern Plains, and then there's one at the beginning of the Ouroboros Contract. So each time we switch campaigns, I'll put another one out, is, is kind of the plan. Um, from Phoenix Archer, how about you record you and your group playing D&D &D and post that up? I'd watch that. Well, there's something to be said about videos that are four hours long, especially when it's my job to tell what happened in about one hour. It's not really realistic of me to think that a bunch of people are going to sit for four hours, even if they're, like, playing Minecraft or whatever, listening to a D&D &D game while we talk over each other and laugh and argue and belch into the microphone and do all these different things. D&D um, &D Stories was made so that I wouldn't do that, that I could slice it down into, like, a consumable form rather than just posting up, like, the raw game footage like I tried to do a few times. It just didn't work out especially well. So that and when you start making money on YouTube, very little, though I make. Um, when it comes to recording other people, especially people that are not adults or not present to give their permission, etc., etc., the, the legal fine print can bite you in the ass, so um, I try to avoid any complications as best I can, so it's probably just not going to happen. Uh, from Purple Sheep, could you perhaps set up a podcast page on iTunes? No. From Charlie Arthur, who does your thumbnails? They're pretty talented. The, the pixel art? Uh, the, the pixel art, I do. Uh, I am not a good artist, and, and I don't know anybody who's, who's got the time and, and the serious talent that I want to make, like, super cool, proper art in a short period of time um, that I can afford. <laughs> um, but I just go over to pixelart.net. It's P-I-X-I-L art.net, and I'll just, like, put it in the description or whatever. So you can go see the tool that I use. And you just have to make sure it's like a 9 by 16 in terms of proportions. And it serves as a perfect thumbnail. Uh, I use the gold border and the inner gold border so that it's recognizable. And then some of them uh, I draw straight out. And some of them I look at other things. Like I look at lots of pictures of dragons for Shadow of the Northern Plains. I looked at a lot of pictures of castles and pixel castles for uh, the Ouroboros uh, contract thumbnail and different things like that. I use a lot of inspirations. I just don't, I don't just draw it straight away. I use um, artwork from other things. And I was like, could I make that into pixel art? Should I trace that? Should I combine this and combine that to try and try and make it look good and things like that? And, and thus far, the, the thumbnails have been turning out really well, I think. Um, but yeah, I do those. And they, they take, depending on how complicated they are, anywhere from like a half an hour to an hour, and they get the message across. So I do them. Uh, from Michael Sand, how do you do your pixel art thumbnails? Well, I just told you, pixelart.net. And that is that. So th that's all the questions that I could I could gather up this time. Um, I hope you guys are having a good holiday season. It's almost Christmas, isn't it? And I know I didn't fulfill any of my New Year's resolutions this year. I didn't get uh, any Elder Scrolls reviews done because the first few games refused to be recorded on... Um, on what, what am I using? Fraps. Fraps, for some reason, does not work with the early Elder Scrolls games. And the first Elder Scrolls game refuses to function 
for me. Like, no matter what source I grab it from, it doesn't let me save and it doesn't let me level up, so I basically can't play it as much more than a curiosity. Uh, Daggerfall, much the same, refuses to be recorded with any software that I've got. And so if I couldn't start from the beginning, I really didn't want to do it at all, because there's tons and tons and tons of reviews for Skyrim and Oblivion and Morrowind. The point of that New Year's resolution was to start from the beginning and move to present, and I just couldn't do it. Um, Toxica the All-Knowing, the uh, novel that I'm working on, is one-third finished. I'm sorry. Um... I just wasn't inspired for a long time. I, I won't sell you excuses. It is well underway now. So if you enjoyed Cyranox the Feared, this is much the same, uh, same, I guess, universe, if you want to call it that. Uh, the same universe as Cyranox the Feared. Toxica the All-Knowing, I can't even really put a date on it, but it, it is being worked on, I promise, even though I've said that for the past year. Sorry. It's a slow process. I can't really poke fun at George R. R. Martin for taking forever on the Game of Thrones books if I can't even write a freaking short story like I'm supposed to. But it is sitting... Let me let me look it up, actually. Where's my Toxica folder? There it is. Uh, rough Draft. Right now, Toxica is sitting at 40 pages long. So it has been seen and worked on lately. But, um, busy, busy, busy holiday season, so, sorry. And as far as the, uh, 8,800 subscribers that I promised myself, well, that just didn't happen. So, I tried, and, uh, meh. YouTube's, uh, watchers and views and things are all wonky right now, anyway, since they completely changed the system. So, there's not a lot I can do in terms of setting goals like that. So I failed all three of my New Year's resolutions, so... Sorry. <laughs> um, trying to think if there's anything else. Mm, I just picked up Diablo 3. I mean, <laughs> I know I'm like several years behind everybody else in terms of RPGs, but I was like, I really should play this. Everybody's always yapping about it and how wonderful it is. And I like it so far. I mean, I'm just in, like, the first chapter or whatever, but it's pretty fun. Um, I just finished Tokyo Mirage Sessions, so I had I needed to pick up another RPG anyway. Um, and like I said, it took Nintendo all of 12 hours to say, no, you shouldn't be making money reviewing our products like every other gaming company in the world. I mean, if Electronic Arts has better etiquette than you, then something's wrong, Nintendo. Sorry. Um. Gosh, I guess I can't really think of anything else. I just wanted to answer a bunch of questions and let you guys know what was up. I am, like I said, I'm super, super busy with the holiday season and doing D&D &D stories retold and working on Toxica and, and doing all these other different things. I've got a bunch of stuff coming up. Uh, as far as episodes go, please keep hitting that like button and leaving those comments and stuff. That'll that'll keep the episodes coming out. Um, thank you to my recent uh, Patreon people that, that signed up. I know Patreon is apparently not a thing I'm going to be successful at, but for the few folks that are kicking gold pieces into my hat, thank you so much. It means a lot. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys later. So... Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping for the update video, and I'll see you on the next D and D stories. Keep gaming.